Yes, we have the one featherweight world champion with us, Tan Lee. Tan, fantastic to see you're coming off a truly epic title defense against Gary Tonin. It's been a while. He is a world-class grappler. You're coming up against a very dangerous striker. How have you been and how different has this camp been to your last? Um, been great. Thank you for asking. Um, and camp's been wonderful. It's always very, very interesting to be able to switch modes uh, and then get new opponents who bring out different sides of you for preparation during you know camp live work things like that but being able to solve and uh break down this new puzzle it's, it's the reason i do yeah, i enjoy it it's part of uh what makes me better as a martial artist as a fighter as a uh, man so yeah it's been great and it's been a lot of fun that was a little bit of banter a lot of respect between you and gary in the build-up to that one tank by there are no smiles he said he wants to kill you in his post-fight speech have you come up against a guy with this kind of pre-fight attitude before um i guess not um but you know it's a fight there's two guys in there with the ref and we're gonna try to take each other's heads off and whether he's the most respectful guy i've ever met or somebody who wants to kill me it's uh he'll get the the same time lee the best possible version of myself that i can bring into the circle um, no matter what, you know, I'm always uh, doing exactly the same things, uh, following the, what I believe is the, the right plan at the right time to get me to the point where I can be successful in defending this belt. Um, you know, I like to hang my hat on being calm, collected in the, in the fire. And that's just one extra thing to prove that, yeah, I am calm, collected during any kind of talk, any kind of fire, any kind of uh, back and forth. He's painted as young, hungry, explosive, powerful, but is his eagerness to take your head off going to count against him here? It just depends. Um, I think that is going to make him more dangerous, which is something that's on the, uh, you know, on the alert side of things and, and making sure that we got to make sure we're on point. Um, but it also with, that's the way martial arts works, right? I guess that's the way life works. It's, it's kind of a, a balance, you know, a zero sum. So if he's going to send more danger my way. It usually means there's a little less defense in, in the attack side of things from my side. So, um, you know, there's always a give and take. He's a very good fighter, very skilled, smart guy. Uh, I think he's going to uh, approach it in, in the right manner. But yeah, if he comes, gun, comes out guns and blazing, we're uh, ready for that too. Tactically, do you relish that? The fact that he might run into something here? Yeah, I mean, um, like I said, that's uh, it's. I don't go out there, you know, running people down, trying to knock them out. But I have uh, a number of first round knockouts, you know, quite a few second round knockouts as well. I've never been to a decision, but guys, uh, you know, feel me, feel my presence in the circle, and uh, it brings out certain things. And I've, I've got a record of of knocking people out when they do take that that forward step. So we'll see how it plays out, but. Um, yeah, that's part of it. You know, the, the, the quote unquote bad guys always control, you know, what weapons and, and what choices and decisions I make based on their approach. And I think that's, um, you know, based on my last few fights, you'll, you've seen when those knockouts came because of the, the, the approach that the, the other guy has brought to the table. Who, in your words, is the better striker? Out of me and him? I yeah. Mean, yeah, in my words, I think it's me. Now you ask him, he's going to be him. Um, but I also think I'm a better MMA fighter, but I'm sure he thinks that as well. So, you know, that's the whole point. He's fighting for a world title. He better have some confidence. He better have uh, some belief in himself. Um, I've got it as well, and that's what's got me to this point. So, you know, no matter what I say, he's going to think his opinion, of course, and I'm going to think my opinion, and that's why we fight, to play it out, see how it goes. What did that mean to you to earn your BJJ black belt in terms of your overall martial arts journey? That's big. Um, just for me, not for anything else, not for fights, not for, uh, I don't know, Instagram or whatever, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's why I do it. I do this first and foremost for my family, but I do this for myself and my personal goals to become the best possible version of myself. And I think doing things that move me in the direction of a BJJ black belt make me closer to that final product that I'd like to be. You know, obviously we're all searching to be the perfect fighter, 
um, if, if being a world champion is in you know what you're looking for, and you want to be as close to perfect as possible, even though that's something that's never going to happen. Being as close as possible is the goal, and uh, you know I'm trying to work every day with intent, with diligence to make sure I'm just a little bit closer every day. Because your striking is just so good, people often describe you as a striker. So, is it because your striking is that good, or are people sleeping on your grappling? Uh, I mean, I, I you know, I, I think it could be a combination of both. Um, I, I do have a, a record of knocking a lot of people out, so that plays out well in, in the, I guess, the narrative. Um, but you know, you can't blame people for sleeping on my grappling because you you guys have never really seen much of it. Uh, we saw a little glimpse into it last fight that ended up working well. I think uh, that's part of what I do well on the ground is bringing my striking danger and knowledge down to the mats uh, and being able to transition, grapple, and then still be a big danger with strikes. Do you envision the idea of submitting him here? Would that please you in a way to to get the finish in that manner? Um, I guess I haven't really thought about it a ton, but you know, that, that I, I just want to win. You know, we want to go out there. I want to keep this belt. I want to prove uh, to myself and my family that, that, you know, we belong as world champions and I belong uh, with this belt around my waist. And it's going to be nice to get that new, uh, that new world title wrapped around that new uh, one belt. And, um, yeah, that's that's the goal, and we just want to go out there, perform well, be the best version of myself, and, and it'll play out how it plays out. Did you watch his knockout against Kim Jae Won, and we impressed? Yeah, yeah, I was there um, at at the event. It was a great event, fun to watch. You know, obviously, I was paying attention to that fight. The main event was amazing. It was just a, overall a, one of the one of the best things I've seen live. Um, but his fight in particular, obviously I was paying attention to it because we knew that was a number one contender fight. Um, it was a good fight. Um, I think Kim, you know, made a couple of big mistakes and he paid for it. And that's what guys that I'm going to fight every single time from here on out are going to do. You make a big mistake, you're going to pay for it. And, uh, he, you know, Tank Guy did his job and finished him. And, um, if I go out there and make the same mistake, he'll go out there and finish me. So we got to make sure we're on the, the wrong, the yeah, good side of that. What do you think of when you hear him kind of talking trash to you? What's your reaction? This blank, nothing. I go out there and do my job no matter what. I get words, I get faces, meme mugs. They don't bother me. I, uh, in his words, I'm, you know, I'm too old for that. <laughs> As a champion, you are one of the best fighters in one championship right now. You've proven it. Does it spur you on when you see people like Rainier Derrida, who may be also in the running for the best pound for pound fighter in the division or in the promotion? Um, I mean, I like all those guys. RDR is awesome. Uh, you know, spoken a little bit, message back and forth. Uh, great fighter. Um, but yeah, I, I don't pay too much attention to that. I'm trying to be the best version of myself. If that happens to make me the number one best fighter in the world, then awesome. I, I would be proud of that. Um, but that's not something I'm searching for. It's not like that's uh, something hanging over my head that's going to, you know, give me any more fire because I couldn't possibly have any more fire. I do this for my family. I do this for my son, my daughter, my wife, my mom, dad, brother. Like I, I do it for my inner circle and there's nothing in this material world that can make me want to be better than that. How much does it give you momentum that you're on this crazy streak? He's also on a streak as well. Does that give you a little bit of extra motivation to end his streak as well? I think um, it does wake you up in the morning for camp. You know, you think about those things like, man, this guy's really good. So was the last guy I fought. And so was the guy before that. You know what I mean? And that's why I do this, to fight the baddest guys on the planet. He's one of them. He's earned his spot. And this is why I do this sport. It, it, it wakes you up, gets you into camp, keeps you motivated, keeps you moving in the right direction, makes you put in the extra hours. But to me, that person is a, is a skill set. That person is dangerous that he brings into the circle with a blank face. I don't care who he is. I care what he does as a fighter and I care what skills and dangers he presents. And I've got to solve that puzzle. You have a lot of dangerous weapons 
which have you been sharpening recently? Would you say, what are you looking to showcase here? Um, that's a good question. I think uh, without giving too much of any kind of game plan, you know, I think mixing my striking uh, completely, bringing all of my weapons to the table is going to be big. Uh, whether that's close, close range stuff, whether that's long range things that you guys have seen me do in the past. And then the job is to, to mix that all really well, you know, accordion style to bring that in, bring it out, um, be able to attack at the right moments, you know. What do you think his most dangerous weapon is? He's got a lot. He's got speed, power, he's sharp guy. Um, you know, that left leg brings some danger. That left hook brings some danger. Obviously, he stung uh, Kim with that right hand and the left hook. He likes that, um, that setup and that presentation uh, and orientation. But I think it's more about the moments that he likes to strike on and not particularly the weapons because he's all around a great striker. If I let him hit me with a, I don't know what's something I didn't say, a, a right hand uppercut, I'm sure he can put me to sleep. The idea is just to not let those moments happen and to be able to be, you know, in his face and out of his face whenever we want to control that. He's never submitted anybody. You're a BJJ black belt. Is that an area of weakness and a big factor in this fight? Um, I'm not sure if it's an area of weakness. We haven't seen a ton of his grappling. Uh, we've seen a little bit in some of the fights. He's got a good double leg. He has, uh, you know, good wrestling moments. Um, I've seen him on bottom. I've seen him on top a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, like I said earlier, I think I'm a better all around mixed martial artist. Uh, I think I bring a lot to the table as far as mixing and grappling and striking, standing and grappling, obviously. Um, so yeah, I think, um, I think there are some areas that we want to exploit in the striking aspect, in the wrestling aspect, and in the uh, grappling aspect of things. It may transpire that you're busy celebrating, but will you make your way circle side? How intrigued are you by Okra Yun and Christian Lee? What's going to go down there? Uh, yeah, hopefully we're celebrating and you know, we're not dealing with any injuries or anything like that, you know. Um, but very interested. Um, you know, I've, I've bumped in and had conversation with both of those guys. Very, very uh, humble, uh, great fighters, smart guys. You know, it's, um, it's going to be cool to watch as a fan, but definitely paying attention um, as somebody who would love to go up and, and meet one of those guys in the cage and test myself against somebody with some, some skills like that. Does it feel inevitable to you that one of those guys, if not both of them, are going to be standing across from you sooner or later? Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's, that's inevitable is a, a good word. Um, there's a few things I want to accomplish as, as a, a, a world champion in this sport, and moving up a weight class is definitely one of them, whether that's next fight or five fights from now. I want to make sure that uh, that is something I test myself with um, for me. Not so I can walk around with two gold belts. That's always cool too. But like I said earlier in all those questions, I want to be the best version of myself. And I think going up and challenging myself in that type of aspect with a bigger, longer range of your guy with those skill sets, whether it's Oak or Christian, is, is something I have to do. It's uh, for me, you know, and it's, uh, it's a great challenge, great test. It wakes you up in the morning for camp. We're going to get a definitive answer pretty soon. But before that, as a martial artist, can I just ask you, who's the better fighter out of those two guys? Oof, man, that's an impossible question. I haven't seen enough to tell you, to be honest with you. Uh, both of them have some, some great history in the circle, uh, beaten some really good guys. Um, the first fight played out crazy back and forth. I guess you could say a, a controversial decision. You know, I had some some discrepancy on both sides of things, uh, who, who thought who won or whatever. But um, initial reaction, I did think Christian might have squeaked it out, um, but obviously he didn't win that. So we'll see how the second one plays out. But um, can't give you an answer on that one, man. They're both really good. And I, it'd be an honor to step into the circle and fight either one of those guys. For the casual observer who might be tuning into their first Tan Lee fight, what can they expect from you? And if you had to give a prediction as in the eyes of the casual fan, how are you going to finish this guy? Um, first time fan, man. where have you been? Tune in, check it out. It's going to be fireworks. Um, I've never been to a decision, win or lose. We're going to bring a finish.
Hopefully we're not getting finished, but it's going to be one or the other. I promise you that. Tune in. Check it out Friday. Somebody's getting their head taken off. This is the timely way. Prediction. Got to go my way, obviously. I think we're going to win this. I think it's going to be a KO in third round. We like it. Brilliant stuff, champ. Good luck. Always good to see you. Or to hear you, in fact. Thank you.